Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to create buttons in ActionScript 3.0. Open Flash, create a new Flash ActionScript 3.0 file, and we're going to make uh, about three pages here. So, what you want to do is just make some simple buttons here. Yeah. Probably want black, and we'll make it red. There's one, and then we're going to hold Alt and drag it over to duplicate it. And now we have three backgrounds to buttons, so we want to add some text. We'll call this one Link 1. Make it white. Nah, let's make it black. There we go. And we want Link 2 and Link 3. Okay, if you look at what we've done here, we put three buttons on the same frame on the same layer. But we're going to have three frames that each frame is going to contain a page. So it's going to go one, two, the third frame is going to be the third page, second frame is going to be the second page, and so on. So what we need to do is call this layer buttons. And we need the buttons to be able to be visible on all three frames. So now you have three frames and the buttons are visible on all three frames. Now what we're going to do is give give these buttons instances and convert them to movie clips. So what you do first is you grab the first button, make sure it's highlighted with the text, and hit F8 to convert it to a movie clip. And we're going to call this one button one underscore movie clip MC. Then we're going to do the same with button 2, F8, call it button 2, underscore movie clip, and button 3, underscore MC. Now we have our three buttons, and they're each a movie clip, so we can pull it out of the library and use them whenever we want. When we pull them out of the library, you're going to want to give them an instance name so that the action script knows what, what it's talking to. So for link one, we're going to give it an instance name of button one. Link two, we're going to give it an instance name of button two. And you only need to click on these movie clips once to be able to give it an instance name. And we're going to give it button three for the third one. Now we have our buttons all set up. And they have instances and their movie clips. So we need to change layers and we'll make a pages layer. And we need three keyframes here, so hit F6 on each keyframe. And on keyframe one, we're just going to say this is page one. page one is only on the first frame if you notice so it doesn't carry over to frame two or frame three but the buttons stay there we want frame two and frame three to be for page two and page three so we're gonna take the second keyframe and we're gonna say this is page two And we're going to take the third keyframe and say, this is page three. Get over there. There we go. So now it's going to, when you run the animation right now, if you wanted to test it, it would just keep looping through all three of these pages. You don't want that. You want it to stop on each page so that the user can control how often it goes to the next frame and which frame it goes to. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an actions layer now. So we're going to call this actions. And what we want to do is on each keyframe we want it to be able to stop so that you can stop and look at it. So we have keyframe on frame 1, 
we need another keyframe which is F6 on frame 2 and F6 to frame 3. Now it's still gonna keep running through this animation right here so we need to actually put the stop in the action script. So you're gonna hit F9 to open your actions panel and then while you're clicked on frame 1 of the actions layer you wanna say stop. Now it's gonna stop on frame 1 once you run the movie clip but when you click on link 2 it's gonna keep going to 3. So what we wanna do is on frame 2 we need to add another stop. And on frame 3 we don't want it to restart so we're gonna add another stop. Now we have all our stop frames set. So once you hit control enter, actually we'll try it now. It doesn't it doesn't go on to the next page, it just says this is page one and the links aren't active yet. So now I'm gonna show you how to set up to be able to talk to make the buttons talk to each frame. So on the actions layer in frame one is where we're gonna put all our code. Just remember the instance names that you called each one of these buttons. So link one was button one, link two was button two and link 3 was button 3. And we're going to need to remember that for the actions layer. So make sure you clicked on the actions layer, frame 1. And underneath the stop we're going to add some code. So we're going to say that first that first button was called button 1. We gave it an instance name of button 1. And we want to talk to that. So we're going to say button 1. And we're going to add an event listener. what that does is says did you click me yet did you click me yet did you click me yet it just keeps listening for a uh, user input and that user input is going to be a mouse event and what kind of mouse event it's going to be a click after you have that it's going to say okay you clicked it but what do i do now it's going to call a function and what it wants to do or what we want to do is call page one because they clicked button one we want frame one to be visible so we're gonna call function page one you can name those whatever you want you don't have to call them page one page two and page three but we will need three events we need we need button one button two and button three to be able to listen for a mouse click so we're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it twice and we're gonna change this to button two and this to page two this will be button 3 and this will be page 3. So now we have event listeners on all three buttons, but it's still not doing anything. This is where the page 1, page 2, and page 3 comes in. We're going to create some functions that are going to tell tell the buttons or tell the pages that you were clicked. So we're going to say function page 1 which is you're defining this page one function because it's being called up here. So we're going to say function page one. What happened? It was an event. What kind of event? It was a mouse event. And then we're going to, this void on the end just means that we're not returning any variables back. We're not returning any variables back to this function call. So we're just going to say void and then we're going to do open curly brace, close curly brace. And inside here is we're going to where we're going to put our executions right inside here. And it's very simple. All we're going to say is button 1 was clicked. Where's page 1? Page 1 is on frame 1. So we're going to say go to and stop. And then we're going to say where? Stop on frame 1. And that's it. So the re the reason we put, you know, frame 1 on there is because if the user is on page 3, you want them to be able to go back to page 1. So they can go back to page 1. And what we're going to do is we need to create this two more times. So we're going to paste it. Now we have three functions and what we want to do is just rename this. This is page 2. This is page 3 and we want this page 2 to stop on frame 2 and we want page 3 to stop on frame 3 
So just understand that that you need to call a function and this page one is calling function page one and inside page one it's telling the code to do stuff. Go to and stop frame one. Page two, did you click it yet? Yes, somebody clicked it. Let's go to the function page two and stop on frame two. And the same for three. So now that should be it and you should have uh, fully functioning three pages if you have done this right. And let's test it out. There's link one, this is page one. Link two, this is page two link 3, this is page 3, and back to 1. Now you see where these stop frames were important because if you were to hit link 2 and there was no stop frame it would just go straight to page 3. And that's it.